today we are looking at finding a limit of a multivariable function. And we're going to use the definition to do this. So this is something that uh, is a little bit more advanced, more along the math major side of things. But just for fun, just wanted to throw this out there and kind of look at the definition a little bit more in detail and find the limit of a function. So what we're going to do first is actually look at the definition. The definition says the number L um, in the real numbers is a limit of a function f of x, y at some point a, b. If for every epsilon greater than zero, we can find a delta greater than zero, such that when the distance from the point x, y to the point a, b is less than delta, that implies the distance between the function value and our number L is less than the number epsilon that we chose the tolerance. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by saying, okay, well, what we typically do is we um, we apply the approach where we try to disprove the limit exists by taking different paths to the point. And this limit that we had is going to the origin. So we're going to take a path to the origin, the x-axis, that's the first path to the origin that we should try. That's y equals zero. So if I plug in y equals zero, then I get a limit of zero. And so I try another one, maybe the y-axis, and I plug in x equals zero, that's the y-axis, and I get a limit of zero again. And I say, okay, well maybe I try another path that goes to the origin, maybe the, the line y equals x. So all of these paths go to the origin. So this is the limit as x, x goes to zero. And this is going to be uh, basically reduced down to 4x over 2, which is just zero again. So this is, uh, this is kind of uh, suggesting maybe that the limit is zero. So how do we actually show that the limit is zero? We have an idea of why it might be zero. Well, let's conjecture that the limit is zero. So how do we prove something like this using the definition? Well, we basically need to show that the definition of this applies to this limit and this function, which means we need to show this inequality is true for some delta that we have to choose to get the distance from x, y to 0, 0 less than delta. We're going to choose a specific delta. So we're going to start off with this inequality right here and try to analyze it a little bit and maybe do some things with it that will help us. So probably what we want to do first is um, what do we have to work with? What are we working with? Well, we're definitely going to have that the distance from x, y to the origin is less than delta, which if we rewrite that as x minus 0 squared, that's just x squared, and y minus 0 squared, that's just y squared. A lot can actually be said from this one inequality. Um, for example, we could say the absolute value of x would be less than delta. Um, we could say the absolute value of y would be less than delta, and the absolute value of x, y would be less than delta squared. So there's quite a bit that we can say from just this one inequality that we're going to assume. So these are things that we will know for sure will be true once we set x squared plus y squared, the square root of that, less than delta. All right, so now we're going to uh, look back at our inequality. And we say, okay, 4x squared y over x squared plus y squared minus 0. That's really just 4x squared y over x squared plus y squared, absolute value. That's what we want to show is less than epsilon. All right, one clever trick that we use to increase the value of an object on the left would be by removing a smaller number on the left. Uh, what, we, what we're talking about is the ratio x squared over x squared plus y squared. If I get rid of that ratio, then the thing inside the absolute value will only get larger. So four x squared y over x squared plus y squared would be less than or equal to four times y inside that absolute value. Um, so that is one trick we can use to increase the value of what's on the inside of that absolute value. So if we remove x squared plus y squared, or sorry, x, or, x squared over x squared plus y squared from the left, we can only get bigger. So basically this inequality is definitely going to be true for sure. You might say, how do I know x squared is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared. Well, these are real numbers, so y squared is at least zero, so x squared is definitely less than or equal to x squared plus y squared should be equal to right there, less than or equal to. 
the same thing here, less than or equal to. All right, so from above, we know that absolute value of y was less than delta, so absolute value of 4y would be less than 4 delta. So this is starting to indicate what we should choose for delta. If we want this thing to be less than epsilon, maybe we should pick delta equals absolute value, or sorry, epsilon over 4. So the best choice for delta that we need to choose from our definition would be to pick delta equals epsilon over 4 to make the final inequality reduced to absolute value of 4y less than 4 delta equals epsilon. So now we can actually go through the formal proof. We could say, okay, the formal proof would be let epsilon be greater than 0 and let delta equal epsilon over 4 and let the distance from xy to the origin be less than delta. Then, for sure, we would know absolute value of y would be less than or equal, or less than, square root of x squared plus y squared, less than delta. And then we could obtain absolute value of 4x squared y over x squared plus y squared minus 0 equals, well, subtracting 0 doesn't really change anything. And then we could say it's less than 4y, maybe even less than or equal to 4y, by taking the x squared over x squared plus y squared out of the equation, or out of the left-hand side. And now we know absolute value of y is less than delta. So absolute value of 4y would be less than 4 delta. And that equals epsilon, and that would conclude the proof. So that is the thought process I go through to figure out, okay, how do I pick the delta? Um, what kind of estimates do I need to make? Um, how do I get rid of something maybe to make the inequality larger and then work my way up to delta? That's kind of my thought process when I go through a proof like that. And that's how I do it.